This is our fourth and final segment for this episode of Roadworthy Drive. Now, a few months ago, we talked about a large metropolitan city on the East Coast that was considering changes to its zoning laws to combat the challenges of climate change that will be impacting the city over the next 50 years. For this segment, Chase and I are taking a look at a small southern community on the East Coast that's being forced into making some very expensive decisions in order to protect their way of life right now. And I can tell you, it's not going well. The town is... Avon, North Carolina. It is a town on the Outer Banks, which is basically basically a, a sandbar in the middle of the Atlantic. I mean, they're basically at the highest point on this thing, 12 feet above sea level. And they've been losing beach at 6 to 12 feet per year. Jeez. In fact, it is so bad, the state highway into town, Highway 12, the Army Corps of Engineers in the state of North Carolina has determined that they can no longer protect the road from sea swells and the ocean. They are building a 2.4-mile bridge at a cost, and it's a two-lane bridge, at a cost of $155 million in this town, and it's the only road in the town. Now, here's the problem. Um... They want to protect their way of life. They are fighting a losing battle. In fact, a little history about the Outer Banks. Um, after a particularly nasty storm in 1899, the state of North Carolina decided not to develop this area because it was too prone to the ocean, and that, and that was over 100 years ago. Unfortunately, the developers, seeing an opportunity, swooped in, bought it up, created the town anyway. And people live there and vacation there. And they're extreme risk because they really have, right now, there's no seawall. It's not elevated. You have some uh, the facing the beach where I'm looking at a picture now of a row of houses on, literally on the beach within 200 yards of waves now. As far as the eye can see, Access Street and then a little further in, Highway 12. And then a canal. There is no way they can maintain this. Now, here's the problem they're looking at. In order to save the town and to stop its main road from washing away, they need to raise $11 million. Um, the town only has a couple hundred full-time residents. Bottom line, uh, the county wants to increase their property taxes, in some cases, by almost 50%. Wow. <laughs> it's, e it's either that or you lose the town. Yeah. Now, everybody has their own ideas about who should pay for it. The federal government, state government, the rest of the county, tourists, people rent to the tourists, anybody but them. That ain't going to fly. I mean, yeah, I mean, folks, you made a decision to live in a situation where you had that risk. Even if you didn't have climate change, you still were at risk to any hurricane coming up the coast and any inclement weather coming in off the ocean. Add to that the fact that climate change is eroding your beach feet a year, not inches, feet. And the fact that they've got this process, and I want to get it right, that they call, what do they call it? And it costs like between 5 to $20 million, something like uh Sand harvesting, where they basically go out into the ocean, dredge up the sand, and, and basically cart it back to the beach and, and basically replenish the beach with the sand. Uh, the problem is other towns in the Outer Banks have done it. And the problem is that it only lasts for, in the perfect world, five years. Well, this line, when Carol and Bob Peterson bought a house on the ocean in 1997, it was protected from the water by two rows of huge dunes, Ms. Peterson said. Mm -hmm. Years of storms have washed away those dunes, leaving their 2,800 square foot home exposed to the water. So basically, what, 25 years, 24 years it took for this? I mean, again, the county said in the town of Avon, they're losing their beach at a rate of six feet per year in, excuse me, in some places. 
What they're worried about, they're saying right now, as the beach disappears, even a minor storm sends ocean water across the highway. And they're afraid that eventually a hurricane will push enough water over the road to tear it up, leaving the town inaccessible for weeks or more. Did I mention it's the only way into town? Yeah. How many other places do we have like this? More than you would think. Yeah. I mean, from Staten Island, New York, all the way down the coast. Yeah. This gets repeated. New York had to deal with it with Superstorm Sandy back in 2012. Um, you know, we've seen all that rain that Houston got back, what, in 2017? Yeah, I think the so. The derecho we got last year. I mean, climate change is real. And it's affecting our country in different ways. And it's affecting the ability of people to be mobile. What happens if you're in the middle of a storm? This has got all the all the markings of what happened to Galveston in 1901. And in that case, Galveston was barely above sea level. And they got a nasty tornado that was a bullseye on Galveston. They evacuated too late and 12,000 people died. We've got better ways to forecast storms. But the question is, at what point... Do you stop spending this kind of money and realize that, you know what? The only way is to move the house. Move. Yeah. But the problem is, if you've spent all this money, can you afford to do it? Government pays them. It gives them money to But why? Let me play devil. Why? You chose to live there. Well, it's, you chose to live there. Yeah, you knew uh, yeah. the risk. I could see that if you're. Why you're, should the rest of the taxpayers the, let's say if you're on the bail you out? Yeah, sure. But I'm saying if you're on the more if you were it's more of a vacation home, second home type thing, I could see that a little more maybe, but But I mean what? We we incentivize people for careless behaviors? What what if they just like live there with their parents and their kids that oh, grew up there? Oh, there's some folks that have lived there for generations. Yeah. But the problem is you chose and you saw it coming. And it's I mean, hard this for is them to relocate. What if, you know, they're yeah. paycheck to paycheck. Right. So here's the thing. I would be in favor, and I'm just speaking for myself. You know, if the city, if the state or the federal government provided a fund like they did, we moved to town here in Iowa where they were moved back from the river on the bluff. I'm in favor of that. The city of Des Moines did that after the last flood we had at the Des Moines River. They bought a number of homes that was in the floodplain. Mm -hmm. That makes sense to me. Yeah. It's a one-time deal. You take it. We buy your home. You get made whole. You move. Yep. And get off the floodplain. Okay. That I could go with. Um, then you're going to fight in years for court on what, you've, what your home is worth. Yeah. Oh, well. So, especially, but, yeah, with the because the value would be decreasing since it's yeah. going to go away eventually. Yeah. And they talked about other towns where they did all this remediation only to have it wash away and be at more risk now. How many times can you do this before the big one comes and just takes everything? Not good. No, it's not. But I use this as an example because there are many other towns just like it. Yep. We have come to the end of our program.